a large model showman's engine, this is part 7. Refitting and testing the lubricator, examining the circuitry in the black box and making an adapter for the new whistle. I've refitted the lubricator to the engine and it's all piped up. The engine is running, albeit slowly, because my small compressor just cannot keep up with the air that this thing needs. I figured that by filling the lubricator tank right to the top and then running the engine, I would be able to sit and watch the level drop. This is possibly not the best idea I've ever had because this is the fastest I can make this engine run using my small compressor and it soon slows down and I really don't think my lifespan is long enough to sit here watching the oil level in the tank drop. The best way to do it is to stop the engine and rotate the small handle on the pump. But I wanted to see the amount of oil that was being pumped into the cylinder when the engine was running. And the good news is, I think this should be OK. If you now look at the level in the lubricator, you will see that it's not quite to the top. Most traction engines do not sit level. This is so that the water is always over the firebox crown. And you can see this by the oil level. The engine soon slowed down and I left it running. I wanted to have a quick look at what's inside this black box that I found under the canopy. It looks like this engine has an alternator rather than a dynamo. The original battery in the box was flat and the wire was broken, so I broke off the other wire, bared the ends and pushed them into the connector of a radio control transmitter battery. This is 9.6 volts. With this battery connected into the circuit, I got a flashing red LED on the box. To be honest, I'm really not sure what's happening with this generator. I will figure it out in the fullness of time. It looks to me like the bulbs are all wired in series. Pretty much like the old sets of Christmas tree lights. If one bulb goes, then none of them work. And under the canopy where all the bulbs are, three of them are missing. Time now to fit the new whistle. In this clip, I'm removing the temporary adapter to which I fitted the airline. Let's have a quick recap on the old whistle. It's a bit too Thomas the Tank Engine for my liking. This one is a lot louder and a lot better. These beautiful four-tube chime whistles are made by my friend Chris English at CME Engineering. On the left is the valve that he also supplies. And if you want to treat yourself to one of these, they are available from Blackgates Engineering. The whistles are designed to be fitted on a pipe, remotely mounted from the valve. But if you're screwing the whistle directly into the valve, it's a good idea to use a couple of packing washers. Now I need a special adapter to make it so I can fit this valve into the cylinder block. The end of the adapter that screws into the top of the cylinder needs a thread of 3 8 by 40 threads per inch, which I don't often see. 3 8 by 32 threads per inch is more common. Currently though I'm working on the other end. I'm centre drilling the piece of brass hexagon and drilling it tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I'm not drilling it all the way through with the tapping size drill. I want the fitting to be strong. I've drilled the piece of brass hexagon just deep enough to accept the thread on the bottom of the valve. In this part of the clip I'm using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap to thread this hole in the piece of brass hexagon. And here it is, just deep enough to accept the threads on the bottom of the valve. The next part of the job is to part it off. Brass is very easy to part off, you can do it at a high speed and very quickly. Next I remove the piece of brass hexagon from the chuck and fit the part that I've just parted off because I need to turn this down to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. I've shortened this sequence and I haven't bothered showing the actual threading of it, it's a simple job and I've done it many times. But if you're still not sure how to do this I recommend that you watch my series Model Engineering for Beginners. And with the magic of video, here is the almost finished part. I'm cleaning it up on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper and it's ideal for cleaning up metal parts. Don't go away though, it's not over yet. I want this whistle adapter to have a secondary function, so I can connect an airline to the engine when I'm testing it in the workshop. I fitted the adapter into the top of the cylinder, including the copper washer that's going to be fitted to it. I tightened it fully using a spanner and then I used a felt tip pen to make a mark on the part that I need to drill a hole in. Then I drilled a hole through a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter brass bar 
Then I threaded the piece of brass 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. And finally silver soldered it into the side of the adapter. And now I have a whistle adapter that is dual purpose. It supports the whistle and allows me to connect a compressed air line into the system. Quite easily and simply without bending down and hurting my back. All I need to do now is tighten up the adapter. And that's it. The job is done, it's the end of the episode, all I have to do now is just test it and see if the whistle works, even though the pressure is only at about £30 per square inch. I'd just like to say, stay safe and well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.